Fun. It's a wonderful day. As soon as we get all signed in, we'll start. People have commented on their tax bills that were sent out last week and are thrilled to be living in town of Jackson, even though the taxes went up so much. So I want to um, talk about the numbers and the components that make up the tax rate, mostly for the people that aren't here so that can watch Hank's um, video and will know what makes up the differences. So the town rate of $4.93 is an increase of three and a half percent over the 2022 rate. Okay, 3.5 percent was the town component, went up 17 cents per thousand. The local school, which is the grammar school, Bartlett, Kennett, SAU 9, etc., went up 57 cents from last year, which is a 15.2 percent increase. The state school rate went up 57 cents which is a 43.8% increase in the tax rate. And the county tax went up 14 cents, which is 12.7% increase. So the town component was the smallest increase and we were actually able to use a, a large amount of our general fund to keep that rate down as low as possible. And um, you'll see the detail in the town report later or if you um, ask, Julie, she can always provide that information, but it'll be provided in detail. The last component is, is for the taxpayers that live in the water precinct. That component went up 65 cents, which is 17.6 percent increase. So that's a, a quite a large increase in all of the different components. The smallest increase being in the town, but all of them add up to a large tax increase. So. Um, if anyone has questions, they can certainly talk to Karen or Gloria in the, t in the clerk's office. She will be putting this information out on e-news as well, so that co the components will be available. Um, please look at your different assessments from year to year to see if that can also add an extra component if your property value is increased. And then lastly, what I've been trying to hawk all year long is that you need to come to the budget hearings. It's really important that we all talk about the budget as quick, as early as we can in the process, not just when it comes to town meeting. And I'll say it at the end of the meeting as well, but our budget hearings are Tuesday, January 9th. These are all on the back of the agenda as well. Tuesday, January 9th, following the select meeting at 3.30. Tuesday, January 23rd, at, at following the 3.30 select board meeting. And we're also having three um, budget hearings, so we'll have the third one for petition to articles on Tuesday, February 6th, following the select meeting at 3.30. So please mark your calendars, please ask us questions, challenge us, make us think about what we're spending money on or saving money on. And um, town meeting is going to be important, but these meetings are absolutely important and essential to what decisions we make the night of town meeting. So. Thank you very much for my soapbox there. 
On to the discussion and motions. Um, first, we have Dundee Road logging. Gary, did you have some comments on this? Um, I do. Um, they're going to use the access that's over the red listed bridge that we have on Dundee Road, mm -hmm. but they're putting in um, a temporary steel bridge that's expanding over the top of the bridge that's there now. Um, that's rated for over 100,000 pounds. They're going to carry the loads that they're going to be taking out of there. Um, we're actually doing that tomorrow. I'm going over there to be with them when we do that. <coughs> um, set that temporary bridge up. Um, no, we've closed the road today, but hopefully right. within a couple hours we can open it back up. And um, <coughs> my, I always ask, is there any cost to the town on this? Um, no, I mean, I volunteered to go over there with the loader and help them okay. get it off the truck. Okay. As far as no, there's no cost. And then the other formality here then is the in, intent to cut for this portion, or is this that's a, that's separate? A separate, separate. Okay. That's okay. All right, it's all here. Go ahead. We'll move off of yeah. that. How long do you expect that temporary um, bridge to, to um, okay. Well, the first intent to cut that I have um, that came in, I mean, we just received another one, but they thought they would be done by Christmas. Okay. At the absolute, said everything went perfect, they'd be out there in four weeks, but mm -hmm. you can't count on that. Mm -hmm. said, but they, you know, looking at it, foreseeing, you know, whatever problem could arise, weather or breakdowns or whatever, you know, they said they were confident they'd be out by Christmas. And that will change with the second cut? Well, with the new cut, I mean, actually, it's a smaller cut, and I contacted him today and talked with him, and that, you know, he needs to contact this other logger because he's going to need to do the same thing with the bridge. You know, there's going to be a temporary bridge over it. So, you know, maybe the two of them, I said maybe the two of them will get together and share the, share the cost on mm -hmm. this, because, I mean, the, the bridge that they're buying is costing the water about $15,000 for that mm -hmm. temporary bridge. So I said, you know, maybe you could cost share on it, but you're both going to need it instead of each yeah. buying a separate bridge. No right. problem running a plow over it. No. Yeah. No. Good. No. No. All right. Any questions? questions? No. All right. Um, that was number four uh, A, and then on four B is the intent to cut for that for the second partial, I guess. So it's on Crossroad, two hundred and fifty-two acres, and it's M Map Lot R thirty Map R thirty Lot one. I will take a motion to approve this intent to cut. So moved. I will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think we're okay done with so. Um, Peter, you brought, oh. I just had a question on that. Is sure. that also a New England forestry piece? Mm -hmm. That's no. a 52 no. acre lot. Who is that? <laughs> uh, Susan McGrath. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. That's okay. No, thanks for the question. Uh, so, 4C, Dundee, Dundee Community Forest. Peter, did you want to speak about that? Uh, sure. Um, as you all may or may not know, uh, the Upper Saco Valley Land Trust uh, acquired the Dundee Community Forest in Barton Jackson uh, this past year. Um, it's a project that some people, some people in this room have worked on, myself included. I was a former board member. I'm also in a butter on, the, on, on um, Thornhill Road. Uh, they're in the process of forming a um, management advisory committee, um, and they were, they're looking for representation from a bunch of different stakeholder groups, including the town, uh, both the towns of Bartlett Jackson, and I would offer my expertise or lack thereof to um, act as your representative in that capacity. Uh, first, the first meeting is December 4th, um, so I haven't received any materials for that yet. Sure. Okay. Um, questions at all? I don't have any questions. I have a comment. I just uh, pre appreciate you offering your experience yeah. in something like this, because if it's, I, I do know you have that experience, and to have somebody on a step forward and volunteering that is uh, really appreciated. I, I, would, I mean, I'll just add, thank you. I would I just add, most of the stakeholder groups are from affiliated organizations. I would like to be able to say to, say at some point to broaden it just a little bit to have a few community members at large be part of this group that don't have a, 
I'd like a stake in it than not a mountain bike or a ski club or Tin Mountain or uh, Jackson Ski Tour, and all of whom have a seat at the table, but they all have vested interests. It would be nice to have one or two community members that are community members at large, and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll push forward for that. So. Thank you. I will make a motion to nominate or to appoint Peter Benson as the town rep on the Dundee Forest Committee. I'll second that. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. And then maybe in a future meeting you could come and talk about it to us so we can get a better feel for the maybe after the first meeting or something. I know that we can talk about it, so that's great. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. I heard that about you. Chuckle, chuckle, <laughs> Crosswalk. Frank. All right, this has to do with the the, the new library as opposed to whatever the name is the other. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next question. Well, I, was, I was getting a book out about Byzantium in our library here, believe it or not, and I spoke with Erica. I didn't really know her. And, um, you know, we just going around, and I, and I mentioned her that I was a selectman, and, and I said, is there anything, you know, I'm always a constituent service, anything we can do, anything we can do? And she said to me, well, you know, a crosswalk, a cross over here for the kids going from the sidewalk to the library would be a good idea, you know? So, for safety purposes, apparently. So I, I, I spoke to our chief and he said, there is a curb cut there, and we would we'd be talking about over on this side, okay? Mm -hmm. Right across from the, uh, the inn here. Um, and I spoke to Jerry Darby of the school board, and he said, this had come up once before, okay? Um, and, but he wasn't sure where it went. They did get the other one across from the school. And then um, the state DOT, I talked to a couple of people there, and one, the head of the uh, highways, he said, that, you know, picking a safe location, good sight lines is a good idea. Um, and um, he said, if you decide to install a sidewalk, it's got to have ADA tip downs and a certain amount of maintenance and a permit for construction, all this. And then it gets a little, they make this sound easy. So this is easy, okay. You, you, you have to get the, um, let me see how they put this here. You have to have federally compliant overhead street lighting, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, the lighting will be the town's responsibility. In other words, it's going to cost us. I'm not sure if that's just for the power to the to the line, or I, I don't know. And um, to get you know to use the sidewalk, and and he said re it requires federally compliant overhead street lighting. As I said, utility company will need to go through District One's pole licensing procedure. Okay, but listen, this is the this is the kicker in the end. So you hear all the stuff that I'm telling you to do. And once we can start narrowing down possible locations, we can see if there are any topographical or drainage issues and what kind of effort will be for the town to design and construct. But then the last sentence is, it can typically be a fairly simple process. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to bring this up. We're listening. You know, I think it's a good idea, not only for the kids walking along the sidewalk from the school, but for pedestrians of all kinds that go here. So this will be an ongoing thing. <coughs> I mean, there's obviously some legwork that has to be done. It wouldn't be done this year. so. We'll see how the board feels about it, but at least we're responding to what some people's concerns. I know Julie Hoyt sees the kids. You, you've told me how you see them out of the office, right? Yeah. Um, and it would just make them safer. So we're responding to that. And if we can get that done, that would be great. Okay. And in the next meeting, we're going to define the word simple. <laughs> <laughs> great. Thanks for that information. Who knew? <coughs> All right. The Jackson Old Library. So, um, we've heard from a couple people recently about what should it be called. It's not the old library, it's not the Shapley building, is it the, is it the Shapley building? What should the old library be called? And then somebody also said that there's confusion when we have programs, is it the, which library is it? And, you know, I guess everybody can have a point of confusion of where it should be and, Google doesn't always get it. Or Google Maps doesn't always get it right. So, what is the intent um, of the library? Is it a historical building that should be named by as its um, architect, or should it be named something that's meaningful to Jackson that's not related to the architect? And I'm so glad we have the committee of those that really care about the building here. So, who's going to speak first, Barbara? Um, well, our first question was why, and um, I know I've been in Jackson for a long time, but there, there are a couple, we have actual natives that are on the board. Mm -hmm. um, when I first came here, we didn't have road names. Everything was by description. Um, the town hall was the town hall. 
Not the old town. Not the old town. Yeah. Yeah. Don't say that right. Yeah. Can you hear you, Bob? Yeah. I can hear you. Um, other than an address, we didn't even have addresses. We didn't have numbers. We had nothing. We didn't even have road names. It was always take a left at this farm, mm -hmm. or at this house, or the blue house. Then you go three up from the blue house, and then you take a left. That all came into being with 9-11, you know, and needing mm -hmm. addresses. It's not like we're on a 25-mile strip here where there can be confusion as to where the library is. Simple directions, go over the covered <laughs> bridge or near the covered bridge. Mm -hmm. The old library isn't close to the covered bridge. I just see, you know, we call the town hall, it's always gonna be the town hall. Mm -hmm. These are the town offices. The old library should always be the old library because we have the Jackson Public Library. Mm -hmm. That's right. There's no confusion. Mm -hmm. There isn't. And, and, well, and I think there will always be confusion because we have two buildings that could be libraries in mm -hmm. town, but defining it maybe, um, to whoever needs to get there might be this part of the solution. So we're at the library next to the church. You know, we're at the library behind town, the town office building, or where. And so one of the confusions was White Mountain Oil delivered to the wrong place. You know, how much how much um, detail can we give those that are going to be going to that building or going to that building? And maybe that's the onus of the person that's ordering the services. Exactly. And I think that if you're properly um, numbered from the street and people can see a number, mm -hmm. that would certainly help. I think it's a matter of a number mm -hmm. and one of the red ones. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question though? Because I did go on to the historical site and it is, it's not a historical building. It's part of the Jackson Historical sure. District, yes. right? Okay, so the building itself is not a Obviously, it's a historical building, but it's not named by itself. No. Okay. And one then, of the things as well, I mean, some of the names that came up, um, Emerson was the architect. I right. mean, the history, the history of the library and why the library is even there is when, Jeff, when the Shapleys built here and had Emerson, that architect, design their home, they also donated, had him design in very similar fashion, the old library. Okay. And so, at times people, have, whoever came up with calling it the Emerson Building is like way out of whack because, because architects don't get buildings named after them. Frank Lloyd Wright never had one. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and also, um, if making the Shapley House is the Shapley House, so what would this be? Someone said the Shapley Cottage. It's the library. They mm -hmm. meant for it to be a library. They donated it as a library. Yeah. And no, that was clarification for me because I knew Emerson was the architect, but I wasn't sure how Shapley. Okay, so that was the original Thank you for that. For books, mm -hmm. it was at the Wentworth. There was a room at the Wentworth Hotel that was probably the original little library, and the Shapleys gotcha. wanted to give back to the town, obviously, and so they built the library. Gotcha. Questions? Thoughts? Anything else? I don't have any questions. I think. Whatever you guys are comfortable with yeah. is what's probably going to be the most. I think it's what Jackson's forward. comfortable with. Yes. We're I, seeing I so know. much change, and, and <laughs> everybody's changing, taking down statues and doing everything okay. else. But the thing is that this is just a teeny tiny yeah. town with a beautiful history, and why name something mm -hmm. might change it? Yeah. 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 And it's well, the comment that I wanted to make was that I was actually. Uh, in that building on Saturday night for a meeting, and uh, what a beautiful, beautiful building it is. We just had a recently it's a just, wedding reception there. Uh, it was awesome. Yeah. For, for if, if the number's right, that, that would be the, the best place in town to have a wedding reception. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's just the, done such a great job in preserving it and keeping it up and mm -hmm. uh, it's it's beautiful and it's spotless and it, and it and it really makes a difference. And we have two wonderful gardeners that take care right. of everything outside that are on the committee. Mm -hmm. Can't go and then readers who leave their books. Yeah. Bobby? I don't know if I get to speak now or not, sure. but um, I don't think the building needs to have a, na a name change. 
what concerns me about that building is that we need to find some good use for the building because it's it's horribly underused mm -hmm. and it is such a fabulous building inside and out mm -hmm. and uh, let's work on that instead of coming up with some name old yeah. library is what it is you know <laughs> you know it's funny you mentioned that too because the whitney center oversight committee has been really doing a great job with programming for the whitney center and you know it, it it takes a large effort to make sure that people do utilize the great facilities that we had in town mm -hmm. so it is agreed but um i really appreciate your input as long as you all are comfortable with the old town library or the old library and we have the public library and people that have services need to be specific of where they want people to go. Ellie? One of our concerns was this new library, the number isn't down here on the road or the sign. And we think that that should have better yeah. signage. And that would lessen the confusion a bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it, it comes through the covered bridge. Yeah. You don't you don't even know the library's here until you write on top of it. It yeah. should be a little better marked. Uh, okay, that's something that, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Peter? We're happy to provide any reflective signs if you need mm -hmm. for yeah. whichever site. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe we can talk about something that's a set aesthetically attractive as well. Yeah. That's yeah. right at the bottom. Yeah, we'll just put something on there. <laughs> yeah. Well, put it by the cross Yeah. Right next to the cross <laughs> The lighted, the lighted cross Can't you just go right on the cross <laughs> Well, it is. Or I have to have the curb lowered. Just yeah. keep some stretch. Well, but I really appreciate the input, and again, all of this goes back to what we talk about in so many meetings when we get off on tangents, mostly is about the culture of the town and what we love about the town. So it's nice to kind of rein things back and say, please don't change it. We don't need to. We just need to be smart about where we're directing some people mm -hmm. and making use of a great building. So <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. So it's going to be the old little library with a number. <laughs> it's called the Emerson Shackley Wentworth Shelf. <laughs> <laughs> then the historic. <laughs> right down the street from the old town hall. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> I've only been here for seven years. Okay, let's move on. Eagle Mountain House DOT letter. Um, this is an ongoing. Uh, situation where the folks that are redoing the carriage house, etc., at the Eagle Mountain House have been communicated to by the DOT, by Kevin Bennett, by Burr Phillips, and they're still not um, getting back to us. Kevin, have you heard anything updated now, or is there still? I have, I have nothing. I have nothing new. I was up there, and nobody's around. And okay. They were supposedly to already start the work. This is, week and nothing's happening. Is this something that you feel we need to get legal involved in to stop any future work, or do we need to get legal involved to help push them along to finish um, what they were supposed to do? Any professional thoughts? I mean, I don't think there's anything on my end that I can stop. You know, I have two open permits one for the mm -hmm. pool house, one for the carriage house. But maybe DOT can just um, actually close that entrance and make them go through the parking lot for now. That would like make them get coming on their project. By closing the entrance, that would not help any of the erosion issues. It would just inconvenience well, them a lot. Like you could, they could put a, a jersey big bear. silk fence. Yeah. Oh. Or, or even maybe the jersey barrier would work for a while as a silk fence. <sighs> but that would require, then that would make maintenance and ski to go through their main parking lot, uh -huh. which <laughs> might make them do something. Kevin, when did you last speak with him? Uh, I met with the owner. I met with the engineer, AGB, uh, the man, the manager, and I mean, everyone was there. It was like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And the plan was to start to have equipment up there to start work almost a week ago. And I have not seen anything. Who's the contact at the Eagle that we could come? Well, I'm just going to the manager because I don't know if the yeah. owner or the owner's son are going to be back in Florida. Okay. Um, 
you want to follow up? I would love to. Yeah, Kevin, I'll, please. I'll Okay. Thank you. And we will keep this on our agenda. But if you find anything out in the meantime that we need to do to take further action, this is really just, it's been this business. Kevin, what's the easiest thing they can do to resolve this right now? Before the snow and it just gets brought out. I mean, is there, is there go anything? There, I mean, go up there and actually clean out the sill fences that are up and put some new, new ones up. Um, and hopefully everything freezes at this point, you know, yeah. next month. And you know, it won't be a problem until you know, next March or April. Mm, which is what the neighbor is worried about. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. And Bernard wasn't able to make it, but he's aware of all this too. Yeah. So you can always include him in on this conversation as well. Okay. Um, unfortunately. All right, trustees of the trust funds withdrawal. We have quite a few that I'm going to read from, and then I believe we can make one motion for all of these. Okay. So the Jackson Select Board are requesting the following withdrawal from the trust funds as indicated below. $488,826.75 from the Fire Department Truck Capital Reserve Fund 003, invoice number 23992 dated 10 23 2023 for AGM Incorporated. And that is for a large part of the uh, new fire truck. Barbara, can I interject one thing? Just one real yes. quick. The new fire truck is coming next month, December, we're finally getting it, according to Jay. I, I spoke to him. Jay's a fire chief. He said it'll be here in December. So. Is it's been exciting. a long time coming. Ellie, hmm. is it too big to get in the station? No. Apparently not anymore. They all go. What? Yeah, it's too bad to stay in the wall. But it's also, the other part is it's an automatic because nobody knows how to drive shifts anymore. Uh, it's the <laughs> I'm serious. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Moving with the times. <laughs> Okay, and the next item is $6,828 from the Fire Department Maintenance Expendable Trust Fund, invoice number 5249, payable to Alpha Overhead Door, invoice dated 10-4-2023. $131 from the Wentworth Wildcat Fund, invoice 14-119-3475, dated 10-12-2023 to Paris Farmers Union. $700 from the Wild, uh, Wentworth Wildcat Fund 0029, invoice number 16, dated November 6, 2023, for Blue Meadow Nursery. And the last amount is $2,524.49 from the Maloon Groundwater Expendable Trust Fund 0071, invoice 30780, dated 1031-2023, for HEB, HEB Engineers Incorporated. And I have a motion to approve these withdrawals. So moved. I'll second you. All in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Okay. Goodness, you did that. We're doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Good. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Just one item. The next item under pending is the fire station discussion. Um, we received a few letters and some input on the location of the proposed new fire station, which is where the old tennis courts are by the public library. But since we have a public information session on Thursday the 16th, we're going to put off discussion of this till that public information session so we can hopefully have a bigger, broader discussion and have a lot more people there. So I hope everyone here is going to be there and 50 to 100 more people and um, those that can't be there, Hank is going to have it streaming, I believe, on Thursday night? Uh, yeah. Okay, perfect. So yeah. Thursday night at the fire station at 6.30, November 16th, Fire Station Public Information Night. Peter, did you have a comment? Um, just, uh, I met with the library trustees last <coughs> week, we toured the site, they had some good questions. Um, just so everybody is aware, there are four cones out there now um, that, that would that have, have rough, the rough uh, footprint of the building. Um, 
some of the cones keep getting moved. I think people think that they don't belong in the middle of the driveway. So every morning I go back and move them aside. I think somebody and I have a hot, silent little war going on. But, um, <laughs> if the cones are moved, um, the, there, there is spray paint on the ground to show where the potential building would be. Just okay. Thanks. Yeah. All right, the next pending item is Paul Pagliarulo. Um, I had spoken to our council but don't have an update yet, and Mr. Pagliarulo isn't here, so I will probably touch base with him next week, and we'll see if this needs to be on the next agenda item as well. <coughs> Five, short-term rental new applications. Uh, we have, oh, I love this, it's really so organized. We have number 19-2, uh, High Pastures Road, tax map R17, lot 31A-W04. This is a four-bedroom condo advertising three bedroom sleeps eight, limited to 30 rentals per year, and this is okay to prove. Have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve that first one on the tax map R17 block 31A 04. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And the next one is their neighbor at 19 1 High Pastures Road. Tax map R17, lot 31A W03. This is a four bedroom approved condo, prior approval in 2019 with no limit. They are conditionally approved based on providing a copy of the advertisement. So um, we can approve this um, one and make it conditional that once we receive the advertisement, they can start and I'll sign it then. Well, I'll make a motion that <coughs> we approve uh, conditionally. Um, 19-1 on Hypatches Road, tax map R17, plot 31A. Kevin, I had a quick question for you. What you're looking for on the advertisement is that the bedrooms match with the approved septic system. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Anything else beyond that, really, that you're looking for? It's, um, the key is the, is the septic, yeah. correct? It isn't Kevin that approves these, just so you know, it's in the town office because... Right, but I mean, that, that's, that's what he's the one on. here, so yeah. he's the expert. I just don't want, to, I I just don't want, to think, want anyone to think that our town inspector, building inspector has to approve these because we do the work in the office yeah. part checking. No, I'm just adding that's what they're looking to line up. I Correct. Mean, it, it, we we want something to actually be said that <coughs> aligns with why we would approve it. It's not right. Easy. So we have a copy of an advertisement that advertises eight bedrooms is what yes. we want to avoid. Correct. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and just an FYI, the reason why we're approving this because it was priorly, uh, priorly, yeah, it was a prior approval was um, that is it? Uh, there was a change in ownership, mm -hmm. so now it's a re submission. So. All right, and I will second that conditional improvement. approval. It's getting late. All those in favor. All right. Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> go back to my English class later. The next is at 6 Iron Mountain Road, tax map R12, lot four, uh, 145. This is a three bedroom approved building permit with septic approved also. 30 rental limit per year. And this is the same as the last one, conditionally approved based on providing a copy of their advertisement. Well, I'll make a motion that we approve both uh, 6 Iron Mountain Road, tax map R12, lot 145 as well as 29 Hemlock Hill Road, tax map R12, lot 176, conditional on the advertising um, aligning with the three bedroom and four bedroom approved building permit slash septic systems. I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. All right. Next, we have no driveway permits, but we have a bunch of building permits. So, any comments, thoughts on those? Nothing? No, pretty straightforward. 
there's five or five of them that are in the middle. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward. Great. Um, all right. Any public comments? But I, is it more appropriate that I speak to Karen? I didn't bring my bill with me, so I can't. And I, I dug out, you know, the previous one, so, you know, but I didn't bring one with me. So, is it better for me to speak to Karen? Is she going to be? Yeah, I think definitely. Person? And then she can explain to you the different components and what increased according to your assessed value, et cetera. And then if you have questions further than that, then obviously either come to a meeting or contact any of us. Okay, thanks. Yes, yeah, so we have extra copy of this. Yeah, um, yeah but I, were you here at the beginning when I was talking about the rates and the increases? Yes. Yes. So these it? are available yeah, at Karen's yeah, office. Yeah, so yeah. you can take this home so when you do open your tax bill, it might help explain the different yeah, rates. I was surprised that you said the town tax rate had increased by 3% because it seemed to me like that was the greatest jump, but maybe I'm remembering right, 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 no, incorrectly. Only six no. Yeah, yeah, so. Um, yeah, definitely grab a copy of that and then um, talk to Karen for sure. Okay. And um, like I always, always stress, please come to the budget hearings and our other meetings. So our next meeting we have talked about is um, Thursday the 16th, and that's the public here. And that's it says Tuesday, but it's Oops. actually Thursday. That's okay. <laughs> Thursday, Oops. November 16th at the fire station at 630. Tuesday, November 28th at 3.30 is our next select board meeting. And following that is Tuesday, December 12th at 3.30. And then we start the fun. Um, we have Tuesday, November 19th at 3.30, which is a select, um, sorry, it's a public hearing for the capital improvement plan. And we actually do have a select meeting that night too, and that will be the last one of the year because the way the holiday falls. So we have two meetings two weeks in a row, but then we are having a public hearing with the capital improvement plan at that. Strongly suggest everyone coming to that too. It's going to have a lot of information mm -hmm. that has more to do with three, five, ten year plans and um, and a lot of work that the planning boards are doing on the capital improvement plan. So mark your calendars for more fun. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, January 9th at 3.30, select board meeting, and then the budget hearing number one, which is the one where we discuss the operating budget. <clears throat> Tuesday, January 16th, if we need it, we will be holding a bond hearing, and that will be based on any proposed large capital improvements that we're going to suggest be on the ballot in March. January 23rd is the second budget hearing where we go over the warrant articles in detail, and that's following the select board meeting at 3.30. Tuesday, February 6th is the final budget hearing, number three, where we will go over petitioned articles, and that again is following the select board meeting. Mark your calendars. Watch for e-news, call, ask questions, any thoughts or anything that comes up, please know we're available. Anything else, guys? I think we have enough meetings to go. I know. It's, uh, it's me. I mean, no, it, I, it, budget necessary. is a great word for me because yeah. I'm an accountant, so I kind of like these meetings. Yeah. But there's a lot on our calendars <laughs> and a lot of work we have to do. Well, I would just like to say that, you know, this year we decided to have three different budget hearings rather than two, mm -hmm. which is the traditional, typical number that we use. And then on top of that, we've also added that public hearing on the capital improvement plan. Right. So that's why it's, it's it, it, there's a lot more public hearings than we used to see. Right. But again, I just I can't stress how important it is to be here when we have the discussions line by line by line, as opposed to the town meeting where we can do things in one fell swoop and be surprised if you're taking a drink of water and you miss something. So. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. I will make a motion to adjourn at 410. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye